His name was George Perry Floyd Jr. And he was born on October 14, 1973 in Fayetteville, North Carolina. George Floyd was surrounded by people he cared about and who cared about him throughout his life, throughout his childhood in that house, through his adolescence, into his adulthood. On May 25, 2020, George Floyd died. Face down on the pavement, right on 38th in Chicago, in Minneapolis. Nine minutes and 29 seconds. Nine minutes and 29 seconds. During this time, George Floyd struggled, desperate to, to breathe, to make enough room in his chest to breathe. But the force was too much. He was, he was trapped. He was trapped with the unyielding pavement underneath him as unyielding as the men who held him down, pushing him, a knee to the neck, a knee to the back, twisting his fingers, holding his legs for nine minutes and 29 seconds, the defendant's weight on him. The lungs in his chest unable to expand because there wasn't enough room to breathe, George Floyd tried he pushed his bare shoulder against the pavement to lift himself, to give his chest, to give his lungs enough room in his chest to breathe with the pavement tearing into his bare skin. As he desperately pushed with his knuckles to make space so he'd have room to breathe, the pavement lacerating, lacerating his knuckles with the defendant stayed on top of him for nine minutes and 29 seconds. So desperate to breathe, he pushed with his face, with his face, to lift himself, to open his chest, to give his lungs room to breathe. He asked for help with his very last breath. But Mr. Officer did not help. The defendant did not help. He stayed on top of him, continued to push him down, to grind his knees, to twist his hand, to twist his fingers into the handcuffs that bound him, looking at him, staring, staring down at times the horrified bystanders who had gathered and watched this unfold. The motto of the Minneapolis Police Department is to protect with courage and to serve with compassion. But George Floyd was not a threat to anyone. He wasn't trying to hurt anyone. He wasn't trying to do anything to anyone. Facing George Floyd that day, that did not require one ounce of courage, and none was shown on that day. No courage was required. All that was required was a little compassion. And none was shown on that day. George Floyd said, I'm not trying to win. This was a call about a counterfeit $20 bill. All that was required was some compassion. Humans need that, right? Because policing is a most noble profession. It is. It is. And to be very clear, this case, this case is called the State of Minnesota versus Derek Chauvin. This case is not called the State of Minnesota versus the police. It is not. Policing is a noble profession. And it is a profession. 
you met several Minneapolis police officers during this trial. You met them. They took the stand. They testified. Make no mistake, this is not a prosecution of the police. It is a prosecution of the defendant. And there's nothing worse for a good police than a bad police who doesn't follow the rules, who doesn't follow procedure, who doesn't follow training, who ignores the policies of the department, the motto of the department, to protect with courage, to serve with compassion. If you commit a certain level of assault, a felony level assault, and a person dies as a result of your assault, you're guilty of murder. It's as simple as that. And what the defendant did here was a straight up felony assault. This was not policing. It was unnecessary. It was gratuitous. It was disproportionate. And he did it on purpose. No question. This was not an accident. He did not trip and fall and find himself upon George Floyd's knee and neck. He did what he did on purpose. And it killed George Floyd. That force for nine minutes and 29 seconds, that killed George Floyd. He betrayed the badge and everything it stood for. It's not how they're trained. It's not following the rules. This is not an anti-police prosecution. It's a pro-police prosecution. The defendant abandoned his values, abandoned the training, and killed a man. And why? Right out in the public, right out in broad daylight, in front of several bystanders as they looked in, in shock and horror? And why? Well, this all started over a call of an alleged counterfeit $20 bill. But George Floyd's life was taken for something worth far, far less. Far less. You saw the photo. You saw the body language. You can learn a lot about someone by looking at their body language. The defendant facing down that crowd. They were pointing cameras at him, recording him, telling him what to do, challenging his authority, his ego, his pride. Not the kind of pride that makes you do better, be better. The kind of ego-based pride that the defendant was not going to be told what to do. He was not going to let these bystanders tell him what to do. He was going to do what he wanted, how he wanted, for as long as he wanted. And there was nothing, nothing they could do about it because he had the authority. He had the power of the badge and the other officers. And the bystanders were powerless. They were powerless to do a thing. The defendant he chose pride over policing. 